Hello everyone, welcome back to ProSahab, myself Dr. Jolsna. So today we are going to start off with a new topic that is prosthetic rehabilitation of dentate maxillectomy patient. So this topic was suggested to us by Dr. Dimple Budiraja. Thanks Dimple for your constant support as well as for suggesting this topic. So this is an important topic in your MFP and you can expect this as usually as a long essay either for 25 marks or even it can be asked as a 75 mark question. So let us see the context. So first of all introduction, classification of maxillary defect, the most important one is the Aramani's classification, the effect of maxillary defects, treatment options, the preoperative considerations, the various phases of prosthodontic treatment in maxillary defects, obturator processes which is the most important part of this topic which is one of the frequently asked question in MFP, then the delivery and post insertion follow up digital technology in prosthetic rehabilitation and finally conclusion and references. So before getting into detail, I request everyone to please do like and share my videos if you are finding them useful. If you have any queries or any topic that needs to be discussed, do comment below this video and I'll try to do a video on that. So let's start. Beginning with introduction, it is the God given right of every human being to appear human. So there are various maxillofacial defects that can cause facial disfigurement that affects the quality of life of the patient and among all the intraoral defect it is a maxillary defect that is the most common one which can appear in the form of a communication between oral cavity and maxillary sinus or nasopharynx. So what is maxillectomy? It is referred to as any resection in part or full of the maxilla proper it can be either congenital or acquired. And the size of the defect may vary from small to large which may include part of hard and soft palate, alveolar bone, floor of nasal cavity, maxillary sinus and may extend even up to the floor of the orbit and zygomatic complex. So the defect involving maxilla can be rehabilitated either by surgical correction that is with plastic surgery or by prosthetic rehabilitation and the processes needed to repair the defect is termed as a maxillary obturator. And this maxillary obturator is necessary in order to restore the contours of the resected palate and it as well as recreate the functional boundaries of the oral cavity with that of maxillary sinus as well as nasopharynx. Next coming to the most commonly used classification of maxillary defect which was proposed by Dr. Muhammad Aramani. So he divided the defects into six categories based on the relationship of the defect to the remaining teeth. So the first one is class 1 that is the midline resection. So here the teeth are maintained on one side of the arch. So here the teeth are maintained and the resection is done across the midline. So this is the most frequently seen defect and most of the patient fall into this category. The next one is class 2 that is the unilateral resection where the natural teeth on one side of the arch is maintained and along with these the anterior teeth on the contralateral side are also maintained. So this is class 2 that is unilateral resection. Come to third one that is class 3 central, central resection that is the palatal defect is in the center of the palate. So you can see the defect in the center of the palate. It may or may not involve the soft palate. So that is class 3 central resection. Coming to class 4 that is the anterior posterior resection. So here the defect crosses the midline and it involves the entire premaxilla. So this is anterior posterior resection that is class 4. Next is class 5 that is posterior resection. So here the resection lies posterior to the remaining natural teeth. So this is a bilateral defect that is posterior to the remaining natural teeth. And the final one that is anterior resection. So here the resection lies anterior to the remaining abutment teeth. So among all these the class 6 is the rarely seen defect and class 1, 2 and 4 are lateral defects with their uh, margins either approaching or crossing the midline and 1, 2 and 4 are the most frequently seen defects. So this is about Aramani's classification of maxillary defect proposed in 1978. Coming to the effect of maxillary defects, so the maxillary defect may lead to anatomical and functional deformity of the maxillofacial region. It will produce concern regarding the facial deformity 
and the anatomical defect can make the oral cavity, the maxillary sinus and the nasal cavity becoming a single confluent chamber and the lack of anatomical boundaries can create difficulty in speech, mastication and deglutition. Speech becomes unintelligible because of hypernasality that is air flows through nose while speaking and it will affect the sound of the voice. Next is passage of fluid into the nasal cavity. So air, liquid as well as food can escape the oral cavity and exit the nares which can create difficulties in mastication, deglutition and as a whole the nutrition. So these are the effect of maxillary defects, the facial deformity, difficulty in speech, mastication and deglutition, passage of air, food as well as liquid into the nasal cavity. Now let us see the various treatment options for maxillary defect. So the maxillary defect can be rehabilitated either by surgical correction with plastic surgery or by prosthetic rehabilitation. The plastic surgery will give you better result as far as aesthetic and function are concerned. But in many cases plastic surgery may be contraindicated because of advanced age of the patient, poor general health, very large defect and poor blood supply due to radiation therapy. So in such cases the obturator processes can rehabilitate the defect and can improve the patient's quality of life. So let us see the preoperative considerations during the prosthetic rehabilitation. So according to Des Jardins in 1977 a prosthodontist is concerned with four objectives that is psychological management of patient, preoperative dental management, preoperative impressions and surgical enhancement and suggestions for the surgeon. So prosthodontists should give psychological support to the patient. Under preoperative management, we have to make sure that every attempt should be done to treat the existing dental issues prior to surgery. So all profile access should be done and all the carious teeth needs to be restored. And this is for two primary reasons. That is it allows complication free recovery. So there is no emergency dental issues during the post surgery healing period. And it will also help to retain the remaining abutment teeth. So early dental treatment will increase the likelihood of the remaining natural teeth serving as adequate abutment for the obturator processes. So this is preoperative dental management. Next is the pre-surgical impressions. So the cast obtained from the impressions of the maxilla and mandible can be used as a permanent record of the pre-surgical state. And it can be also used for the fabrication of surgical obturator. So two casts should be made. One can be kept as a permanent record and the other can be used for making the surgical obturator or interim obturator. Finally, the surgical enhancement and suggestions for the surgeon. So the prosthodontist should inform the surgeon the prosthodontic advantages of maintaining as many of the alveolar process and teeth as possible. So during surgery, the line of resection should pass through the socket of extracted teeth rather than trying to cut between the roots of the teeth that is adjacent to the defect. Th because the teeth that is adjacent to the defect is critical to be used as an abutment for obturator processes. So if there is cut between the roots of the abutment teeth, it can result in loss of teeth post-surgically and can affect the retention of obturator processes. Next is split thickness graft should be used to cover the denuded cheek flap area. Otherwise, during healing time, there is chance that the surface will be covered by the respiratory epithelium that migrates from the nasal cavity or the nasopharynx and this respiratory epithelium will not serve as a good processes bearing tissue because it will get easily abraded and it will also add to mucus secretion that the patient will have to clean from his oral cavity. So split thickness graft is used to cover the area which will become processes bearing within 10 to 14 days and after maturation it can be aggressively cleaned and approximated by the processes. Next coming to the phases of prosthetic restoration. So the first phase is surgical obturator processes, the next interim obturator processes and finally definitive obturator processes. So about these three we will be discussing in detail in our coming sessions. So what is obturator processes? It is a maxillofacial processes used to close, cover or maintain the integrity of oral and nasal compartments resulting from congenital, acquired or developmental disease process that is cancer, 
cleft palate, osteoradio necrosis of the palate. And the processes facilitate speech and deglutition by replacing those tissues lost due to disease process and can as a result reduce nasal regurgitation and hypernasal speech, improve articulation, deglutition and mastication. So this is the GPT-9 definition of obturator processes. So here first you have to mention what for is maxillofacial processes used that is to close, cover or maintain the integrity of oral and nasal compartment and then the functions of the obturator processes that is it facilitates speech, deglutition and it reduces nasal regurgitation and hypernasal speech, improve articulation, deglutition and mastication. Now let us see the classification of obturator processes. There are five classification. The first one according to phases of prosthetic construction that is the surgical or feeding plates, interim or transitional and definitive. According to origin of discrepancy, it can be either congenital defect obturator or acquired defect obturator. Then according to the location of the defect, it can be label or buckle, alveolar, hard palate, soft palate and pharyngeal obturator. And according to physiologic movement, it can be static or it can be functional. And finally, according to type of basic maxillary prosthesis, that is it can be fixed, it can be hinged or movable or it can be detachable. So the first classification that is according to phases of prosthetic construction, surgical, interim and definitive, this classification will be discussing in detail and this will be continued in our next session. So thank you all for watching my video. Please do like, share my videos and if you are watching this for the first time, please do subscribe and show your support. If you have any queries or suggestions or any topic that needs to be discussed, do comment below the video or you can directly mail me at this mail id. So thank you all once again and please stay tuned for our second session of prosthetic rehabilitation of maxillectomic patient.